In the shadowed waters of the North Atlantic, where the silent menace of submarines prowls and the specter of missile salvos looms, the Royal Navy's Type 23 frigates remain a linchpin of Britain's maritime power. As of July 2025, these aging workhorses, now reduced to 10 vessels following the retirement of HMS Northumberland in November 2024, stand at a crossroads. The Type 23 fleet, commissioned between 1989 and 2002, was designed for a Cold War era of anti-submarine warfare and general-purpose missions. Yet, as the global security landscape shifts toward multi-domain threats and great power competition, the Royal Navy has embarked on an ambitious modernization program to extend their service life into the mid-2030s. This effort, encompassing the Life Extension Program, Power Generation Machinery Upgrade, and Critical Weapon and Sensor Enhancements, reflects a nation grappling with the imperatives of maintaining naval relevance amid fiscal constraints and the protracted arrival of successor platforms. The Type 23 modernization is not merely a technical exercise, it is a political and strategic necessity, a testament to Britain's resolve to uphold its NATO commitments and protect its global interests in an era of uncertainty. The LifeX program lies at the heart of this endeavor, a Herculean effort to rejuvenate ships that have weathered decades of operational strain. HMS Sutherland, the final Grotto 13 Type 23, emerged from a nearly four-year refit at Devonport Dockyard in January 2025, its hull reinforced with over 800 steel inserts and 11,500 weld repairs, its propulsion revitalized with new diesel generators, motor generators, and switchboards. This overhaul, which included the Sea Scepter missile system and upgraded Sonar 2150, ensures Sutherland's readiness for ASW-focused deployments, a critical capability as Russian submarine activity intensifies in the North Atlantic. HMS Somerset, recommissioned in March 2022 after a similar four-year refit, boasts enhanced sensors, communication systems, and habitability improvements, underscoring the program's aim to sustain operational viability. HMS Iron Duke, currently undergoing LifeX and HMS Kent, in the midst of PGMU continue this trend, though refit durations, now stretching to 49 months, reveal the challenges of maintaining ships approaching their fourth decade. Costs have escalated with HMS Iron Duke's 2023 refit exceeding £100 million, a stark reminder of the fiscal burden imposed by aging platforms. These refits, while essential, expose a deeper tension the Royal Navy's need to balance immediate operational demands with the long-term transition to modern vessels. The PGMU program addresses a critical vulnerability in the Type 23's Codlag propulsion system, which combines diesel, electric, and gas turbines. Aging Rolls-Royce, Spey turbines, and Wurzela diesel generators have strained operational availability, particularly in high-tempo deployments, a £85 million contract with Rolls-Royce signed in 2019 has facilitated the replacement of diesel generators and optimized engine maintenance, promising £35 million in savings over eight years. Yet, the program's challenges are evident in cases like HMS Northumberland, decommissioned in 2024, after uneconomical repair costs surfaced during its PGMU. The Royal Navy's decision to retire rather than repair reflects a pragmatic, if painful, acknowledgement that not all Type 23s can be sustained indefinitely. This attrition, reducing the fleet from 13 to 10 ships, has sparked political debate, with commentators on platforms like X warning of a dangerously shrinking escort fleet. The Strategic Defense Review of 2025, initiated by the Labour government, has prioritized readiness but faces the reality of a naval force stretched thin with only six Type 23s operational as of November 2024. Weapon and sensor upgrades form the third pillar of the Type 23 modernization, ensuring these frigates remain credible in modern warfare.
the Sea Scepter missile system, now installed across most of the fleet, replaces the obsolete Sea Wolf, offering a 25 kilometer range to counter air and missile threats. HMS Sutherland's 2025 refit marked the completion of this rollout, enhancing the fleet's air defense capabilities. The Type 997 Artisan 3D Radar, a 100 million pounds investment, bolsters air and surface surveillance, while the Sonar 2087 Toad Array system, fitted on eight frigates, maintains the Type 23's ASW preeminence. HMS Richmond's April 2025 integration of the Link 16 Crypto Modernized System, enabling rapid satellite-based data sharing, underscores the fleet's role in carrier strike group operations, as demonstrated in the 2024 Red Sea engagements against Houthi threats. A 135 million pounds contract in March 2024 introduced SEA's Ancelia trainable decoy launchers, replacing fixed C-NAT systems and potentially integrating Martlet missiles, further enhancing missile defense. These upgrades, while incremental, are vital for maintaining interoperability with NATO allies and countering evolving threats like hypersonic missiles. The Type 23's modernization is inexorably tied to the delayed introduction of their successors, the Type 26 and Type 31 frigates. The Type 26, designed for ASW, is plagued by delays, with HMS Glasgow now slated for commissioning in 2026 and full operational capability in 2028. The Type 31, a lighter general-purpose frigate, will see HMS Venturer enter service in 2027, with all five ships delivered by 2030. These delays have forced the Royal Navy to extend Type 23 service, but budget constraints limit further upgrades beyond current commitments. The SDR 2025 emphasizes a balanced fleet, integrating uncrewed surface and underwater vessels to augment manned ships, a nod to the technological shift seen in Australia's drone programs under AUKUS. Yet, unlike Australia's focus on autonomous systems like the MQ-28 Ghostbat, the UK's modernization is anchored in sustaining manned platforms, reflecting different strategic priorities within a shared alliance. Politically, the Type 23 program is a microcosm of Britain's naval ambitions and challenges. The fleet's reduction to 17 surface combatants, 10 frigates and 6 Type 45 destroyers has drawn scrutiny, with ex-posts warning of a potential drop to 6 or 7 escorts by 2026. The 676.7 million pounds allocated over a decade for Type 23 upkeep underscores the financial strain, exacerbated by retirements like HMS Lancaster's planned decommissioning in late 2025. The Royal Navy's industrial base, bolstered by BAE Systems and Babcock, supports thousands of jobs, yet the cancellation of the Type 32 frigate program in 2022 highlights fiscal realities. As the Type 23s sail on, their modernization embodies a delicate balance, sustaining a proud maritime tradition while navigating the turbulent waters of budget cuts, aging hulls, and a rapidly evolving threat environment. The Royal Navy's resolve to maintain these frigates as a credible force reflects not just technical ingenuity, but a strategic determination to project power until the next generation arrives, 